my name is Catherine Roberts. I'm the Executive Director of the American Mathematical Society, and I'm pleased to be share, chairing this session. This is Section 15 and Section 17 invited lectures uh, for the wonderful Congress that we're all attending. Uh, section 15 is on numerical analysis and scientific computing, and Section 17 is for applications, mathematics, and science and technology. So right now, I'd like to introduce our third speaker, uh, Professor Raymond Berger. He is a professor at the Research Center and Department of Mathematical Engineering at the Universidad de Concepcion in Chile. You will soon hear him speak, and you will can be able to tell that he is German by origin. His PhD is from Universität Stuttgart in Germany, and he did that um, work with Wolfgang Wendland and Thomas Sonar. Professor Berger's main research area is mathematical and numerical analysis of conservation laws and related PDEs with applications to the engineering sciences and mathematical biology. And today he is here to speak to us on convection, diffusion, reaction, and transport flow problems that are modeling sedimentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you very much uh, uh, for your kind introduction. And of course, I would uh, also like to express that I'm very much honored to be here. And uh, I'm very much honored to have uh, received the invitation to present my work at this uh, prestigious conference. Uh, the work uh, is entitled uh, On Convection, Diffusion, Reaction and Transport Flow Problems on Sedimentation, and this is done uh, uh, at uh, Universidad de Concepcion in Chile. And before starting, I would like to uh, express my gratitude to uh, CUNICIT Chile uh, and other institutions that have sponsored this research. I would like to just see. Uh, start with some general remarks. We are looking at the problem of sedimentation of small particles dispersed in the viscous fluid, and this is seen as a unit operation in mineral processing, wastewater treatment, medicine, geophysics, volcanology, and other applications. Here, mathematics is urgently needed for the simulation, the design, and the control of processes and equipment, and uh, the description uh, will focus on so-called macroscopic models that is models that are on unit scale for industrial applications, and we are looking at long time phenomena. So we are not interested at the moment uh, in individual particles, but on continuum descriptions of solid and liquid phases, uh, and uh, on the general topic of nonlinear time dependent PDEs. Just as a small historical remark, it's well known that uh, these processes of settling of particles and uh, are of interest uh, to the mining activity. Uh, these are illustrations taken from a very famous uh, book that was published in Germany in the 16th century. So uh, let me just, before starting uh, with the mathematical description, mention some further applications of this research. Uh, these are uh, thickeners. This is a, an equipment that is used, especially in Chile, uh, in copper mining. These are large settling tanks of about 100 meter in diameter uh, that are used to separate uh, solid liquid suspensions into their solid and liquid parts. So the basic purpose of this equipment uh, serves to recover process water that arises from flotation tailings. Uh, flotation is one of the processes that uh, uh, is used to separate the metalliferous fraction uh, in mining uh, from the so-called gank material that is useless solid particles. Um, and the importance, especially in Chile, of this application comes from the fact that most mines are located in desert areas, so uh, water is a very scarce and expensive resource there. Uh, just let me mention that the basic principle of operation of this equipment uh, is as shown here. These are circular tanks with a central inflow of so-called feed suspension, which is allowed to settle. Uh, this material is extracted by a scrape mechanism. A continuous discharge of sediment takes place. And on the other hand, clear liquid flows uh, through a launder truss and is also removed continually. So models are needed uh, for the uh, um, design, the simulation, and uh, control operations of these units, and in particular, one wants to have such a unit operate at steady state without large variations of the sludge length. 
of the sediment level. Now, um, another application that is uh, more familiar uh, in other regions is that uh, of water resource recovery, also known as wastewater treatment plants. This is uh, a drawing, a schematic illustration of the so-called activated sludge method, which occurs in wastewater treatment plants. Uh, this is, roughly speaking, the way uh, that sewage coming from households takes through several stages of process to become uh, clear water. There are two uh, settling ponds arising in this process. One is the primary clarifier, uh, which is a kind of pretreatment equipment, which we are not interested in here. But this is a so-called secondary clarifier, uh, where the settling material is biomass. And this biomass, in turn, is what comes out from this stage of process. This is an aeration tank. So in this unit, uh, settling, as well as biological reactions are taking place. It is uh, very common to see illustrations like this. This is uh, a common aerial view of a wastewater treatment plant, and uh, these are the settling tanks that are usually used in batteries. The um, key term that is known to sanitary engineering is the so-called activated sludge model, or briefly called ASM model, uh, we will come back to this later, and this is um, a purely PDE or ODE-based model uh, for reaction kinetics in this activated sludge process. Let me briefly mention that there are also other applications, uh, like this one mentioned here, the physics in the oil sands of Alberta. Uh, this is related to uh, the production of bitumen, a pre-product uh, of petroleum by the mining of oil sands. Hmm? Uh, it's well known that this is an important activity in Alberta, uh, the, the oil sands of the Athabasca River, and here we have sedimentation processes going on here in this gravity separation vessel, where several fractions uh, are um, separated, as well as in so-called tailings ponds. Uh, they have to um, uh, move the, the tailings, that is the leftovers of the separation, uh, into the original geographic position, and there one wants to know the composition uh, of the deposit. Now, uh, coming to the mathematics, uh, we would like to uh, study simple models uh, that are based on balance equations, uh, the, uh, starting with the description uh, of the conservation of mass of the solids and the mixture. Uh, this is the conservation equation for the um, uh, solids, that of the ma uh, mixture. Here, phi is the unknown of interest in applications, the solids volume fraction. Vs and Vf are phase velocities. Vr is a difference, that is, uh, velocity that describes the solid liquid separation. And Q is the volume average velocity. Hmm? This has the convenient property that its divergence is zero. So if we reduce the whole model to one space dimension, this becomes a given control variable. The constitutive assumption for one space dimension that is frequently made is that the model is closed, uh, is that uh, the relative velocity is a function of phi. Otherwise, if we extend the same model to two or three space dimensions, we have to solve additional PDEs that determine the average flow field. So coming back to the 1D case, uh, uh, if we look at a cylindrical column, then the easiest model possible is that of one scalar conservation law, uh, where the flux is given by phi times some hindered settling function. And for this uh, function here, there are several empirical and semi-empirical approaches. For example, this one, which states that VHS is just the Stokes velocity times some hindrance factor. And the Stokes velocity is the known settling velocity of one particle in an unbounded fluid. Uh, this model was proposed first in this paper and then elaborated. This is the best known reference by Kinch a uh, long time ago. Now, um, uh, we will, for later use, we will recall some basic properties of the solution of a scalar conservation law. It is known that uh, solutions are in general discontinuous, even if initial data are smooth, and that uh, jumps between two solution values, phi minus and phi plus, must satisfy the uh, rankin huguenot or jump condition, which we here write uh, in the form of an ordinary differential equation uh, for a shock trajectory. 
And this is precisely the form that will play a role in the solution construction to be presented later. Furthermore, it is known that a discontinuity is said to be admissible if it satisfies the jump entropy condition, and uh, it is also a classical construction that the settling of a homogeneous suspension uh, in a cylindrical vessel, uh, which is outlined here, uh, can be considered as a solution of one scalar conservation law uh, with two uh, adjacent Riemann problems. So if this is the flux curve, then the picture we obtain would look like this. This is height, this is time, then we get under appropriate circumstances a descending interface, here a rarefaction fan uh, separated by two continuities, and this rarefaction fan interacts with the descending interface here, it forms a curved trajectory, then the whole solution becomes constant. Now, um, this is the base model, which is uh, not worthy of uh, further discussion. Uh, rather, uh, the idea that was behind this simple model uh, has been extended to describe so-called clarifier thickener units. Uh, this is a one-dimensional idealization of the equipment I showed before. So you would have a, a tank with a cross -sectional, constant cross-sectional area, a feed source at a given height, uh, overflow, bulk flows, underflow, uh, discharge flows, and here is a feed mechanism uh, where one feeds suspension to be separated at a given rate QF and a given concentration phi F. So uh, if one puts up the model properly, then we get a scalar equation looking like this. Uh, this is a convection diffusion equation with four terms. Uh, this is a time derivative. Then we get here a bulk flow, that is a transport flow, where Q is a given coefficient. This is the hindered settling function, which is as before. Then we have here a diffusion term describing sediment compressibility, and this is the so-called feed source, which is a singular source that describes the feed mechanism. Now there are two um, uh, ingredients here which make this equation quite interesting. One is that the PDE is strongly degenerate due to common assumptions um, in um, soil mechanics and other areas. One assumes that effective solid stress is not active whenever the concentration is lower or equal than the critical value. So in this case, this term is turned off, is turned off and the equation becomes first order. Hmm? Of course, it is not known where this type change interface become, uh, takes place. And the second uh, aspect is that the whole equation has a discontinuous flux. This comes from the fact that uh, there is a divergence of the bulk flow. Part of the material that enters here flows upwards and part flows downwards, so we get here a conservation law with multiple discontinuous flux. Just let me show you in this uh, plot what would be the result of solving this equation. We have here a 3D plot of concentration versus depth, and this is time. And then we see here a step, which is the interface between the hyperbolic and parabolic area. This is the sediment level, or known as a sludge blanket, in wastewater treatment, and essentially one wishes to control the evolution of this interface by changing the feed concentrations uh, and bulk flows appropriately. Hmm? For example, if one plays with these parameters, then you get that there is an overshoot, the material uh, leaves here uh, through the um, uh, effluent opening, which is of course undesirable, and then uh, if one adjusts the fluxes again, we then obtain again a desirable steady state. Now, uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, model, hmm, as I said, uh, uh, is one of the motivations that uh, were motivated research uh, in conservation laws with this continuous flux. For example, if we turn off uh, the compression effect and absorb the singular source term into the discontinuous flux or into the convective flux via some heavy side function, then we get one scalar conservation law with a flux given here that is multiply discontinuous and a typical solution would be, for example, a situation here uh, around z equals zero, which is the feed level. Here we have one flux to the left, which is this one, uh, no, this one, uh, and one flux to the right. Huh? Uh, they intersect uh, at phi f, which is the feed concentration, and these fluxes are not closed. Yeah? So uh, these fluxes do not coincide in their values 
at zero and at the maximum concentration. Hmm? Roughly speaking, uh, one can say that in this model, the kind of uh, the characteristic information uh, uh, comes uh, from the feed point. Now, uh, this model has in part motivated the well posedness analysis and numerical analysis for conservation laws with discontinuous flux, which can be written in this way if we isolate the flux discontinuity at just one point, x equals zero, we have a flux to the right and a flux to the left, and the basic difficulty comes from the observation that the equality of fluxes uh, to both sides of x equals zero can be satisfied in multiple ways. Yeah? Then, um, to find uh, the right criterion uh, to create uniqueness and to uh, define definite solutions depends on the solution concept and on the application that is, for example, vehicular flow, traffic flow, and heterogeneous modia. And um, in general, we cannot say that well posedness is a straightforward limit uh, for the theory of PDEs with smooth solutions. Uh, just let me mention some names of uh, uh, people who, or colleagues who have distributed, contributed to the mathematical analysis. Uh, the first uh, um, a paper that, uh, to my knowledge, was published on conservation law as discontinuous flux was by Mochon, uh, considering application of traffic flow. Uh, then these colleagues uh, have um, made several contributions. Uh, they, in part, went uh, deeper into the topic than uh, uh, is motivated by the application to sedimentation. And uh, I, as far as I know, the paper by Andrianov, Carlsen, and Riesebo in 2011 uh, presents uh, a new approach, a unifying theory that allows to select uh, or to, to advance um, um, a unique theory covering several physical realities. Now, uh, the numerical schemes uh, were also studied by uh, quite a number of authors, which uh, I mentioned here. Um, for the um, model of sedimentation, if the diffusion term, the degenerate diffusion term is active, uh, we established uh, well posedness and the convergence of numerical schemes uh, in one paper. And uh, meanwhile, uh, this model has been widely accepted and is especially well referenced in the literature um, of uh, wastewater treatment. Now, um, it, this is a, a well-developed body of literature. And what I would like to present here are several extensions recent developments that improve this approach. Uh, I would like to talk about three different new topics. One is that of the inverse problem, that is a new approach to uh, identify the flux that arises in these equations from settling in a cone. Then uh, a recent extension to wastewater treatment that includes biological reactions, also called reactive settling. Then, of course, uh, since the world is not one-dimensional, uh, we have uh, uh, made contributions to multidimensional models and especially defined numerical simulations, and these give rise to coupled flow transport problems. Now, in topic one, uh, flux identification from settling in a cone, we are looking at a deliberately simple model. Uh, we are uh, neglecting uh, sediment compressibility, look at one scalar conservation law with a weight function, and this quantity A of X is the cross-sectional area of a settling vessel. Uh, if A is constant, then we are in a cylinder and the case is classical. But we want to study the phenomenon uh, in a vessel with varying cross-sectional area that is in particular in a cone. So we equip this equation with the appropriate initial and boundary conditions. Assume that the function is twice differentiable. It closes uh, at 0 and 1 that there is a single maximum, and we assume that the cross-sectional area has this particular um, parametric form. Hmm? Uh, the most important aspect is that if we take P equal zero and Q equal one half, uh, then the uh, vessel described is actually a cone, hmm? a full cone. Yeah? Um, this uh, is important uh, if one knows that uh, settling cones uh, are very common equipment uh, in uh, sanitary engineering. Uh, they even have the proper name, Imhof cone. Uh, 
uh, and uh, these cones can be easily bought uh, anywhere by any provider. Yeah? So if we uh, develop a method that uh, takes place in an Imhoff code, it moreover requires nothing but uh, monitoring the interface forming between clear liquid and the sediment, then this is something that can be used easily. Um, the new contribution that was made to this model hmm, uh, is the explicit construction of entropy solutions by the method of characteristics, the numerical uh, approximation of curved shocks, and uh, it was proved that uh, for a concave convex flux, that is a flux that has exactly one inflection point, there are three different solutions in dependence of the initial concentration. Now the decisive observation is uh, that uh, from the mathematical analysis it results that uh, the suspension supernate interface in a cone appeals to a range of values of concentration in contrast to the cylindrical case. Hmm? So if I measure this velocity here, the velocity of descent, then I get by the rankin egonio condition just information on one point of the flux. Hmm? Instead, if I measure the whole trajectory in a cone, where this interface would descend with continuously decreasing speed, then I can convert this information into a whole portion of the flux. So um, the solution of the problem uh, uh, gave rise to the solution of the so-called inverse problem that is as follows. Suppose we measure this interface, h of t, then we can uh, convert the information into um, uh, the explicit flux curve for an interval of five values. Hmm? This was recently published in uh, quite a number of papers indicated here. Now, <clears throat> uh, just uh, as a reminder, uh, the, uh, how do we construct the solution? Uh, we have already mentioned that curved trajectories uh, that uh, mark as continuities can be um, solved or can be identified by solving the ODE that comes from the Reichen new condition. Wherever the solution is smooth, uh, we appeal to a concept uh, of an entropy solution and use the method of characteristics for the smooth persons. Uh, to apply this method, we just uh, write the governing PDE in quasi-linear form, identify the coefficients functions, then solve the characteristic ODEs uh, that are given here. And uh, what we see is that uh, characteristics and ISO concentration lines do not coincide in this case, which is, uh, makes the treatment complicated. And moreover, that uh, concentration increases uh, along uh, characteristics as long as we are in a cone that is a downwards restricting cross-sectional area. Now, if we solve these equations appropriately, and uh, I will just skip this equation, then and start from the initial condition, then we get one algebraic equation which uh, has equates this quantity psi, hmm, uh, which uh, involves time and x. So this is um, a position uh, with concentration, and this function q is just given by this integral here uh, that involves the flux function. But the difficult point is uh, that uh, this integral can, in general, not be solved in closed form unless this flux f is quadratic. So what we did is uh, we formulated uh, this problem and we're able to construct solutions numerically by integrating these characteristics numerically, but also showed that uh, the solution has some generic properties that I will um, illustrate as follows. So uh, it turns out that uh, depending on, on the value of phi zero for a convex concave function f, there are three different model cases, a low concentration, a medium, and a high one. Uh, depending uh, on the um, uh, location of phi zero with respect to the intercept of the tangent of the flux with the flux itself uh, and with respect to the inflection point. So one can then uh, deduce that the, the problem has three different piecewise smooth entropy solutions formed by characteristics and curved trajectories of entropy per satisfying shocks. Uh, we see that the descending shock is strictly convex. There may be a rising shock and uh, the solution is continuous below h of t uh, in certain cases. So this was done by um, uh, 
uh, Julio Carriaga, a joint uh, PhD student of Stefan Diel in Lund, Sweden, and myself. Um, he is working in Lund, and he, he uh, produced these nice plots here. This is the height, this is time. Uh, we get one decreasing interface, which is here drawn in thick blue, and one increasing, which may or may not meet the decreasing one. And uh, these are all projected plots uh, of the characteristics whose solution forms the problem. This is the corresponding 3D plot, where we have here concentration, uh, here depth, and this is time. And uh, for the joy of it, we re-simulated the same problem here by Godunov method, which is a monotone method and therefore known to converge to the uh, entropy solution in the classical sense, and both solutions coincide. Now, um, for different initial concentrations, we get uh, different solution pictures that are shown here. Uh, this is height, this is time. Here, for example, these and these discontinuities may meet. Uh, here, they don't meet. And here, the lower discontinuity doesn't meet at all. Hmm? On the other hand, uh, Keep in mind that this decreasing uh, shock uh, is a mathematical construct that actually corresponds to the suspension supernet interface, something that can be measured very easily by visual inspection. Hmm? Here we still have the problem that there are different uh, uh, zones of the solution, huh, which I will not go into detail, so it's not uh, possible to use the information in this case because the governing equation of this interface changes its nature. However, uh, if uh, we are here in the first segment, huh, then we know that the evolution of the interface is given by a pair of equations. This is the rankine eugen yu condition corresponding to the evolution or to the varying uh, uh, shock speed. And this is the equation that uh, governs the concentration in this rarefaction zone. Now, uh, if one assumes that we are in a full cone, uh, then we are in an interesting situation because then there is one single definition of H of T. We do not uh, have to um, check uh, for, eventual, uh, for possible changes. We can use this full curve for parameter identification. And this uh, is case is actually of interest for flux identification, as we shall see. Uh, so the solution is then, uh, if we apply the solution theory properly, an equation uh, that uh, uh, defines here the pair phi versus f of phi. Uh, here, this is a function that involves certain parameters, h of t, and this is the vector 1 minus h prime of t. We can even get an explicit solution from this problem, and both formulas uh, presuppose that uh, h prime is negative, so that the interface is decreasing, and that the curve is actually convex. So if we have measured data from such interfaces, then we just need to approximate the discrete data um, by a convex curve. This can be done by a spline approximation with um, um, uh, restrictions, which is done here. And the solution uh, to the problem would look like this. We get here, for example, the case of an H curve. Hmm? Uh, with five sub-intervals of spline identification, and here the number of sub-intervals decreases. We get here 5, 20, and uh, sub-intervals, the quality of identification increases, and the same thing happens here uh, if we use a certain uh, transformed quantity S and uh, once again uh, apply the identification method for 10 or 40 sub-intervals. Now, uh, this has been applied to real material, uh, to um, sludge that was allowed to settle in a cone. We get here measurements of data uh, that represent the curve. This is the reconstructed portion um, obtained by the new method, which can be completed uh, to, for the tails to obtain the complete flux, then we re-simulated the whole process and finally obtain a satisfactory agreement between the re-simulated experiment uh, and the measurements. Now, um, suppose that we uh, have uh, identified the flux, then I would like to um, come to the next extension of the basic model. We are still uh, considering a, a secondary settling tank or clarifier thickener, but here with the complication uh, that uh, we allow to inject uh, not only solid mass, but the material that comes in here 
is actually biomass. Hmm? Furthermore, uh, this is the concentration is now written in mass units. Um, the mass density is a capital X, and uh, we feed the unit uh, with uh, uh, um, particulate components uh, and substrate components, that is liquid components. The feed input vectors are CF and SF. Uh, this gives rise to volumetric flows, the feed underflow and effluent, uh, as in the model that was presented in the introduction. And uh, we then include the activated sludge model, that is the uh, uh, accepted biokinetic ODEs at every depth. Then the idea is to describe the mechanical processes, that is hindered and compressive settling, uh, on total particulate concentration X, and then solve additional equations for the um, particulate and substrate components. So, um, the um, solid and liquid phases hmm, are given uh, as a vector, uh, precisely as a vector of percentages that multiplies the total density. Uh, this is done for the solid phase and the liquid phase. The reaction terms are those of the activated sludge model. And finally, we need to complete the model by defining a relative velocity which is done here. This is the same uh, velocity as in the clarifier thickener model without reactions, but we write here x for the concentration. Here is the nonlinear convective flux. This is the generating diffusion term. Here we see that this term is usually given uh, as a primitive of a certain diffusion coefficient. And this coefficient multiplies this expression, the so-called effective solid stress, which is assumed to be zero whenever x is less or equal to xc. So these models are, degen are generically strongly degenerate. Now, uh, if we write down the balance equations uh, in the right order, then we get uh, one nonlinear PDE of the similar type as the clarifier thickener model uh, for the biomass x. Then we get transport equations uh, for the percentages uh, of the solids an update equation for the liquid volume fraction. This is an equation for the percentages of the liquid, and this is the final update equation. And the right-hand sides are just the summed reaction terms. Then we have here the flux F or X, which has here one uh, convective component, and here uh, is the nonlinear convective and the diffusive component. And these are, moreover, modulated by a switch function gamma, which distinguishes between the interior and the exterior of the unit. So these equations are strongly coupled by the bulk velocity, which is the same as before. Now, uh, the uh, new contribution was a numerical scheme. Hmm? Uh, basically, we took one scalar scheme uh, as for conservation law with discontinuous flux, uh, having here one upwind formula, this quotation here, a term uh, corresponding to the Godunov scheme and second differences. So we get here a simple explicit scheme uh, with uh, three terms here. This is the corresponding numerical divergence built on this total flux. Um, a new ingredient uh, was here the mechanism of percentage propagation. We want to use the information coming from the updated total biomass to update also the percentage values. This was done uh, by a particularly designed scheme which has here a contribution uh, that involves uh, uh, upwinding according to the sign of the total discrete flux. Um, this has been done, implemented numerically uh, with the result that under a suitable CFL condition given here, uh, we obtain physically reasonable solutions that is, uh, uh, the uh, concentrations live between zero and the maximum one uh, and all densities and percentages uh, behave as they should. Uh, this is just uh, one uh, numerical simulation where I don't want to walk you to the, the whole number of expressions just mention that a typical scenario is that of denitrification. Uh, bound nitrogen is um, uh, converted into free nitrogen. There are two solid components uh, denoted by ordinary heterotrophic organisms and unregulatable organics. These two form the biomass. Uh, this is uh, the leftover of the uh, denitrification process. Here we have nitrate, diagradable substrate, and nitrogen. The most important process is the conversion of nitrate into nitrogen, and these are the reaction terms. They are just multiplied by XO. Hmm? So uh, only wherever 
biomass is present, reaction can take place. Uh, this is just one scenario that we will consider. I will skip this simply to save time. Now, this is a numerical solution that should appear now. Yeah, this one. This took some time to load. Hmm? So, um, this is uh, the kind of simulations we get here. Uh, these are uh, seven plots of X, X Oho, and X U. Uh, these two um, particulate components make up X. Uh, these are four liquid components. This is time, this is depth. Here we see that uh, we can control and manipulate the sediment level. Uh, it remains here within the unit. Then we change the conditions so that an overflow is produced. This is the uh, nitrogen or nitrate, huh, which is washed out by the clear liquid. Uh, this is material, or this happens wherever there is no solid material, so no reaction can got on. On the other hand, where there is solid material, we observe here the quick formation of nitrogen uh, in the unit, and uh, this material is actually washed out uh, with the overflow and the discharge mechanisms. This is finally the, whole, the density of the water fraction. So uh, in, in a whole, we are able to simulate uh, the whole um, denitrification process combined with the mechanical process of settling. Um, this was also done, um, um, we made a short numerical analysis that is uh, by a converged solution, uh, we uh, identified that uh, the corresponding numerical solutions with rough discretization parameters tend to the desired one. Now, um, with uh, the um, problem of um, uh, one-dimensional settling and uh, that of reactive settling quite under control, I would like to mention some efforts that have been recently made in the simulation of coupled flow, transport flow problems. Uh, these are two configurations that are of interest in our application. Uh, this is one of an inclined channel. Hmm? That is, uh, there is a very simple 2D configuration, a simple rectangular tank, hmm? uh, and the settling process in this unit um, gives rise to the so-called boycott effect, that is the formation of a small uh, upward streaming liquid interface. Here we will just limit ourselves to those uh, descriptions that are relevant for the applications, that is of a circular tank, uh, where we can assume that uh, the um, uh, geometry and the phenomenon are axisymmetric, so the whole computational domain would look like this. This is a segment with an inflow, an outflow condition, and some overflow. Now let us recall that for the description of such a, a model, uh, the volume average velocity, Q, hmm, uh, is no longer determined. The equations that we have uh, studied so far are just the continuity equations. And if we are in more than one space dimension, then these equations are not sufficient. Uh, we need to solve additional equations for the motion of mixture. Hmm? So the whole problem, uh, when uh, um, studied in more than one space dimension, not only changes its, its dimensionality, but also its uh, um, complexity. Um, then um, one of the coupled transport flow problems that describes this phenomenon would look like this. Uh, we have one equation, one PDE, uh, that uh, describes the transport phenomenon, that is the evolution uh, of the Hertz concentration. And this can be coupled uh, in many different ways to equations that describe the flow of the mixture. For example, this would be a version of the Navier-Stokes equations, uh, giving here this equation for Q. Oh, sorry. And uh, this is coupled just with the condition of divergence-free condition. So this would be, in principle, a closed system uh, for phi, the pressure P, and the velocity Q. Here on the right-hand side, we have certain terms uh, that describe the interaction between the transport and the flow field that involve the local density of the mixture. K is a uh, vector pointing in the direction of gravity, and there are certain other known model functions, uh, including here a description of the compression process and here a nonlinear viscosity. So the primary unknowns are the velocity Q, the solid concentration phi, and the pressure P. 
Now, um, for this uh, problem, um, Alvarez, Gatica, and Ruiz Bayer uh, put up a new formulation, uh, a mixed formulation that uh, reformulates the problem in terms of the Cauchy fluid pseudo stress, the velocity Q, and the volume fraction phi together with boundary conditions and along with initial data that are given here. Um, they have made uh, quite some experience uh, with this and related models, and this was also treated uh, in the uh, thesis by Mario Alvarez, who was uh, supervised jointly by Gabriel Gatica and Ricardo Ruiz Bayer. So, uh, with, uh, I will show in a minute some numerical results. However, the study of mathematical properties of this coupled flow transport problem um, are still open in the general case, and in particular, uh, such models always presuppose that uh, the diffusion term is non-degenerate. Hmm? So there is still a theoretical gap open between uh, 1D models and the scenarios that one would like to simulate in two or three space dimensions. Now, uh, just a few remarks on the numerical schemes uh, uh, that um, uh, I, can, I should say that uh, Ricardo is the, um, the, the has become an expert on. These are finite volume element schemes. So uh, we would like to, to say that um, finite volume based discretizations are indicated uh, when the convection in the diffusive transport is dominant. Otherwise, we would like to use finite element formulations that are more suitable for error analysis. Uh, the combination of both gives rise to finite volume element FVE schemes. Uh, whose construction depends on defining fluxes across element boundaries. Uh, these were uh, applicate, applied in a, quite a number of papers uh, to incompressible flows, and some of the uh, activity around these methods uh, has been applied to sedimentation problems, for example, to the equations uh, in uh, axisymmetric form and using mild point by degeneracy. So uh, we uh, simulated here uh, one uh, axisymmetric secondary settling tank. Please do not read this technical information. Just look at this picture. This is a real unit uh, with a vertical um, axis of symmetry. This is an inlet. This is a so-called skirt baffle. This is a, a circumferential wall, uh, which is introduced for hydrodynamic purposes. The sediment is forming here. This is an underflow opening, and this is the overflow opening. So uh, what happens if we continuously feed this unit uh, is uh, drawn here. This is the concentration, initially zero. Then this is drawn here at several instants. Uh, we can now describe how this uh, equipment is successively filled up, and we observe in particular that the concentration interfaces are nearly horizontal. Uh, these are the results corresponding to the pressure and velocity components, which I will uh, not go into detail now. Uh, then, uh, the more recent contribution was uh, an error, a posteriori error estimation based on the mixed primal formulation. Um, the, this was done by Alvarez, Gatica, and Ruiz Bayer in a paper that meanwhile has appeared. Um, and um, they proposed a version uh, an error estimator for the stationary version of the equations, and uh, in the preceding contribution, uh, there is a suggestion plus a numerical experiment uh, to extend this to the transient case, uh, where the method used was a backward Euler method for time discretization up to a given final time. So these are just uh, two snapshots of results that were obtained. This is the same geometry, hmm, but now calculated with a different method, uh, these uh, are the streamlines that, that uh, apply, appear here in this way. The colors correspond to concentration, and uh, this uh, is uh, the refinement after some time uh, obtained by the a posteriori error estimation. Uh, this is the same scenario after an advanced time step, and we see roughly that the error indicator suggests refining uh, near zones of strong variation of the concentration that is near the sediment interface. Now, with this result, I would like to come to conclusions of my presentation. Uh, topic one uh, has shown a new uh, method of flux identification in cones. Uh, we see that an inverse problem can be solved using the equation 
that we found for the height in the construction of the entropy solution, um, this, the quality of solution that we get could be improved um, if we presuppose information on the concavity or convexity of the flux and, of course, the formulation related to the cross-sectional area, which was a very uh, rough, lumped one, should be revised. Uh, the second uh, topic um, pointed out some uh, new directions uh, at illustrating uh, flow reaction processes taking place especially uh, in secondary settling tanks in wastewater treatment plants. The description is still incomplete and uh, in particular uh, one ingredient that is not treated correctly at the moment is the fact that the nitrogen that is forming is just washed out. Hmm? So uh, it is well known that at very low concentrations in liquid, nitrogen forms bubbles and uh, one should in the future also add uh, the description of the formation of gas bubbles. Finally, uh, we see that uh, with the multidimensional uh, approaches that I only showed a very short way, the most important transport and flow features are described realistically, but uh, all theoretical results for example, addressing stability, uh, depend on that we assume strong ellipticity uh, or monotonicity, in other words, that the transport equation is strongly parabolic. Hmm? Whereas uh, the treatment available in 1D uh, really can rely on strong degenerate parabolic equations. Uh, finally, I would like to mention a few directions of ongoing work. Uh, I have not talked about so-called poly suspensions, that is, uh, systems that um, um, are formed by a number n of uh, particle species hmm, um, that segregate from areas of different composition. They give rise uh, to um, uh, systems of conservation laws, but they are of arbitrary size, but with flux vectors that are um, composed in a systematic way and therefore make eigenvalue estimates and spectral schemes feasible. Uh, a related unit operation is that of a flotation column hmm, where we uh, study the attachment of hydrophobic particles to gas bubbles. Uh, this is currently being studied. Future applications include flows with mass transfer. Geophysical flows uh, are being studied. Uh, this is similar to what uh, was presented in Malone's talk. And uh, finally, uh, the topic of convection diffusion equations of course, brings up uh, the efficient numerical schemes. We are working on uh, IMAX schemes for convection diffusion reaction problems, including high resolution Veno schemes. Finally, I would like to uh, uh, thank collaborators uh, and students that have contributed to this work. Stefan Diel from Lund, Ricardo Ruiz Bayer, Oxford, uh, these colleagues from Laval, Canada, Pep Mollet from Valencia, uh, Enrique Fernandito, Sevilla, Christophe Chalons and the local colleagues, Luis Miguel Villada, Maria Carmen Marti, as well as a number of PhD students. And let me close with a remark that our group is known for uh, organizing uh, congresses on numerical analysis of PDEs. We have the next version, uh, WANA PDE, Workshop on Numerical Analysis of PDEs, going on in Concepcion in January 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have questions, discussion? Any questions from the audience? I have one um, about sort of a civil engineering question. Yes. I'm just curious about um, how much is known about the various shapes in in this analysis, you know, you talked about the cone and the cylinder and the rectangle. You know, how influential are is the geometry to the work that you're doing? The, well, the geometry is is part of uh, part of the data of the problem. Hmm? I mean, typically, one would use data from a manufacturer. Um, this the recommendation is. Uh, what would be the outcome of this presentation is to use a cone huh, because it provides additional information. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank Raymond again.